Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're checking out the M4 Max MacBook Pro. And I've actually got it set up on my system already. So I'm just showing you the M1 Max. Nothing has changed physically on this M1 to M4. And that is good because the design of the M1 was amazing. They did such a good job, made it thicker, stronger, faster, and all that kind of good stuff. M4 Max just builds on that legacy. You now got a nice, stable, solid system. It's not like you're switching between Intel and ARM, you're not doing all that kind of nonsense. It's just faster. It goes between 20% to 50%, 75%, even 300% faster on some cases. Day to day, you're not gonna notice any difference because the M1 Max is really, really fast as it is. Very, very fast. The new final cutters out there, not really gonna notice much difference. Okay, it's gonna export slightly faster. Big deal, but it's not like fan noise city like you used to have on the M, on the M system, the Intel systems. <laughs> Intel systems, <laughs> memories. Yeah, it's a lot faster. Check out my full developer review where I go through a lot of intensive applications, but the summary is the M4 Max it's a lot faster and it's a nice stable design. They haven't redesigned it yet. If you hold out for the M5, that's where you might get a redesign. It might look amazing, might have all of the fancy bells and whistles, thinner, stronger, faster, but will it be more stable? Don't know. So this is a good time to buy. I think so. Just upgraded. It's good, good time to get regarding performance in AI tasks. It was twice as fast as the M1 Max. Thinking, thinking, th boom, it is started talking back to me. Uh, M1 Max hasn't even thought in Unreal Engine gaming kind of like tasks. It was two to three times faster. Just I, I ran Unreal Editor like five times in a row, closing, opening, closing, opening five times. And that was leisurely five times. I could have made it run 10 times if I was at it before the M1 Max actually finally launched it. Launching it for the first time is very slow. Xcode was blazing fast. Android is very fast. Anyway, so it's 24 seconds on the M4 Max and 20, 45 seconds on the M1 Max. So is double the speed in compilation. You see, 20% faster on the M2, 20% faster on the M3, another 20% faster. Boom, that comes up with a 100% faster. That is, obviously, it's just an extra 20 seconds and that's a rebuild from scratch. So it's not gonna change anything and using the application is still gonna be the same. Let's launch this emulator over here and launch the emulator over there, connecting to emulator, connect to the emulator, boom, 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 boom. Launch fast on the M4 Max, but it's just a second or so behind on the M1 Max. So actually using the application wasn't much of a difference. Compilation twice as fast, but you can imagine if you have a really heavy project, you'd probably just be getting a PC. But if you had a project that needed a Mac, the only negative I'd say is slightly more fan noise than the M1 Max. So boom, right there, we've got a score of 60,000 on the M4 Max and 36,000 on the M1 Max. One thing to note is the fans are going off on the M1 Max and there is no fans whatsoever on the M1 Max. So uh, almost twice as fast on the Luxmark. Very, very good test over here, but you are starting to get fans. I would say on the world of fans, like I was, I was conditioned on the Intel Max in my life. So this, this fan noise is nothing to me. And if you ever become a parent, you will understand that core wine and fan noise is nothing. Your eardrums are gonna burst for other reasons. So when you become a parent, maybe this, this noise is kind of soothing. Slightly more fan noise, but the fans went away. It wasn't like the Intel Max where the fans would stay forever. When it needed to do something, the fans came in and they went away. For this test over here, I've got this MacBook M4 Max hooked up to not one display, but two external displays. I am a meta human. I am a meta human. Yeah, I can't hear the fans running. And I've got Unreal Engine running away. I've got Xcode and the Xcode simulator running away. And I've even got a bit of Finale Cut running away. And I can't hear fans, so that is delightful. Also, one other negative is the core wine on the M4 Max is more noticeable than the M1 Max. The core wine on the M4 Max is a little bit it's noticeable than on the M1 Max. And it's only noticeable if you're doing intensive tasks. So you're not gonna hear it day to day. It was only when I was doing like AI image recognition or AI kind of like nonsense, that's when I could hear it. On the M1 Max, it'd be like, and the M4 Max would be like, when I had my hearing to it. So that is for the sensitive core whiners out there. I did a video once. I was talking about core wine because Intel had some serious core wines. The AMD graphics card has core wines. The core wine city and there was some people in the comments, they actually would 
return their Macs like five times in a row, row because of the noise their Macs was making. They just wasn't happy with it. I think someone said that the store manager didn't want to deal with that person anymore. So it, some people are sensitive to that noise. For me, I wasn't, it, was, it, was, it wasn't noticeable whatsoever. It's only when those intensive applications. I'm only going into detail there because some people actually care about this stuff. So it's very, very important. But generally you're getting this rock solid built system, great sound, a great use of webcam. I just put a bit of black tape on it. So, you know, they're spying on you with the AI now. They're spying on you with the webcam now. I got a feeling somebody's watching me. There goes my privacy. Something like that. Now, one thing they have changed and I unfortunately didn't actually get the upgrade. I'm actually returned the M4 that I got and get the upgrade is they have nano texture display so you can cut out reflections. I was a bit worried on if it will make the screen more fragile or if it will just look a bit off the colors. But now that I know that it's possible, I'm just looking at all these reflections and I don't like the reflections anymore. So that is a great upgrade to have, I think. Hopefully, hopefully it will last. Just make sure you get Apple Care. Apple Care is very good. I had one of these screens break and they replaced it for me. So thank you, Apple, for that service. You also get, you can't see that it's physically changed, but you get Thunderbolt 5. Now, I do not have a Thunderbolt 5 cable, but I will be getting a Thunderbolt 5 cable. I will be getting a Thunderbolt 5 cable because 120 gigabits a second sounds tasty. I want to like network these Macs together and like do something with it. I don't know what, I just want to do something. So yeah, I'm gonna have to figure that out, but that's uh, coming soon. That's kind of like Apple intelligence coming soon, December. Tesla coming soon next year. Kind of feature over here on this channel, heads of, heads of tech, give you the best heads of tech. Let me know if you guys are using Thunderbolt 5. Thunderbolt 5, that's nice, amazing bump from 40 gigabits to 120. So that is an improvement that I don't want to use it for, but it's there. So I'm happy with that. Just one thing just to appreciate these, this Mac design. It just looks beautiful, Chris. Look at this large track back. If you're going from the Windows world, these track pads are just insanely massive, but they're so useful. You can do all these interesting gestures. You got a touch ID, but look at these gestures you can have. You can have all the windows appear like there. You can switch between displays. So I have like one application on this screen, one application on that screen, switch through. If I swipe down to see which all the windows from a single application, it's a very, very powerful interface. Just how clever you can do all this kind of clever stuff with the Mac. So that's amazing what they've done there. Something to really appreciate when you're in a world of Mac compared to Windows. And just feeling, the keyboard feels the same. I know I'm using the M1 Max keyboard, but the M4 Max one feels exactly the same, which is good because they had a bit of a situation with the butterfly keys. If anyone knows what that is, yeah, it was a situation with the Max, but it's been working well for the last three years. So definitely this design is rock solid. Next year, they might have new keyboard. It might just be a big touch screen. Hello, Tim Cook or Tim Apple, as your president likes to call you. Make it happen. Vision Pro, whoa, the future is here. But let me know what you guys think of this behemoth M4 Max. And if you want to see more intensive review, check out the developer review in the description. I'll have a link to it right there. Hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show. This is the M1 Max, by the way. But it looks exactly the same. I just can't bother to unplug it, the M4 from over there. I'm doing a fan noise test to make sure that it's not noisy when the external display is plugged in. It wasn't noisy, it was good.